The Wei clan's affairs can be traced back to over 30 years ago. The late emperor's concubine, Lady Amo, gave him his eldest son. However, that eldest son, Prince Xian, committed grave acts of treason and rebellion and was thus sentenced to death. Emperor Jin's consort, Lady Wei. Prince Jin's concubine, Lady Amo. Former Emperor, Prince Jin. Prince Jin and Lady Mo's eldest son, Prince Xian. His Majesty Zhu Ting Tang. Half a year later, Lady Qin married into the palace of the late Emperor Qin, who was only Prince Qin back then and gave birth to his second son, Zhu Jing Tang. I was merely a toddler back then, so I don't remember much. I heard later from an elder in the palace that Lady Yemo wanted to usurp the Queen Mother's position as consort. However, she made a huge mistake that implicated many lives. Because of that, the late emperor decided to name my brother the crown prince and imprisoned Lady Yemo. So did the Wei clan aid the Empress Dowager during her dispute for the position of Prince Qin's consort? It wasn't just the Wei clan. Lady Qin, my queen mother's younger sister, did too. Back then, when she saw how the queen mother was suffering, she willingly agreed to the Wei clan's proposal. She married Wei Yan, a mediocre man who was 12 years her senior, in exchange for the Qingzhou army supporting Prince Qin. At the time, the leader of the Qingzhou army was Wei Tu, Wei Yan, and Wei Jun's father. It was because his eldest son married the consort sister that Wei Tu decided to lead his troops to aid Prince Qin. After Wei Tu's death, his two sons were unable to maintain his success. However, the late emperor granted Wei Yan the title Marquis of Xianan in recognition of Wei Tu's contributions. Two years ago, due to Imperial Consort Wei's conferral and my queen mother's instructions, my brother named Wei Jun the rights officer and Imperial Consort Wei's elder brother, Wei Qian. The Count of Changning This was how the Wei clan became one of the most influential clans in our dynasty. So that's how it is. It's no wonder the emperor was being vague about the Wei clan's internal affairs. It wasn't that he wanted to protect them, but that it involved the dispute for the position of consort all those years ago. He wished to keep it secret for his family out of filial piety. As for the Prince of Yu, he wouldn't have told me any of this if he didn't trust me completely. As for the incident at the Lingguang Temple, Queen Mother was furious at Wei Jun when she saw my injured hand. But since the assassin had cut off Wei Jun's arm and Lady Qin was sobbing hysterically in front of her, she, in turn, placed all the blame on the assassin. And since Wei Jun accused you of harboring that assassin, half the blame naturally fell onto you, too. I was planning on leaving for Shangxi tomorrow, but it seems I had best be going today to prevent anything unsavory from happening. I shall head to the Ministry of Personnel to pick up my appointment document. I ask that you have your carriage take me back down the mountain. I did intend to take Wei Jun down. It's only natural that the Empress Dowager would hate me. What's the rush? If you stayed by my side, you would not need to fear for your safety. The reason why my brother can't protect you this time and was even forced to make you leave the capital is that in his heart, the stability of the country, the status quo of the people, and even our Queen Mother's wishes are all more important to him than your very life. However, I can protect you. In fact, I can even declare to the world that you, Su Qinghe, are the only one I love. Whoever holds a grudge against you shall become my enemy. Would Zhu Jingting dare to do this? He would not. If you pull any harder, my wound will reopen. 
He's done all that he can in his position. His Majesty has been exceedingly kind and shown me great benevolence. I feel nothing but gratitude towards His Majesty and harbor no dissatisfaction whatsoever. Why are you so devoted to him? It would be one thing if you were merely adhering to the etiquettes between ruler and subject. If you're expressing gratitude for his trust in you and for promoting you, and you're dedicating yourself to assisting the betterment of the nation, then I have nothing to say. But the way he's treated you, are you truly content, even happy with it? His Majesty? He's treated me well, though. June 7th, was the person in the back of the Hall of Mental Cultivation on that day you? Your Highness, please relax your grip. Your wound is opening. Did they light Tianxue incense in that room after you drank some wine? Tianxue incense? What? I knew it! So that's how long she got me. So you had your suspicions. You just didn't know where to look. Tianxue incense is meant to be a mood enhancer, but that day, when mixed with wine, it became an aphrodisiac. His personal eunuch drugged you so you would be assaulted. Do you truly hold no resentment over that? His Majesty held no ulterior motives that day. He even helped with my coming-of-age ceremony. But because of the drug, I was the one that acted in an uncouth manner. His Majesty did not berate me for my behavior and even had me send out the palace. I am indeed grateful to him for this. Lan Shi was acting purely on his own during that incident. I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding, your highness. Really? Absolutely. Did you think I'd be able to meet you as usual afterward if that were not the case? I'd have resigned and ran. Resigned and ran? That's all you'd have done? What else could I do? Kill him? Start a rebellion? He's the emperor. If he took advantage of me, what else can I do apart from sucking it up and enduring it? Then what would you do if I took advantage of you?